Hey guys, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. Um, guys, thanks for joining me for another episode. Um, I hope you're getting some use out of these. Uh, again, I'm breaking them down into shorter segments uh, so you can really kind of digest uh, what I'm putting out here. Okay, um, today is going to be part five of the cardiovascular emergency. It's talking a little bit about assessment and management. I'm not going to go deep, deep into assessment or, or the management really that much because this is kind of basic uh, stuff and your treatment and your management is going to depend upon, of course, the patient. There is such a b- broad you know, spectrum of things you will see with patients who have cardiovascular, cardiovascular emergencies that it's hard to squeeze all into a quick Monday minute, right? But I'm hoping that this is going to kind of just direct you a little bit into assessing your patient thoroughly and kind of keeping some things in mind when you're doing that, okay? And of course, this is also designed to help you on your exam. And this is why I always talk about why this stuff is important, right? It's not just about the exams, okay? Yeah, it's key information. It's going to help you pass the exam. It's going to help you understand you know, questions and answers when you're taking the exam. But it's also designed to build your knowledge base, to kind of ring bells in your head of stuff that you might already know, okay, that's going to help you make better clinical decisions, you know, understand what's happening with your patient, make let you make better reports and interact more efficiently with other healthcare providers, even if it, even that means just your, your partner, right? Because even though this is basic stuff, guys, uh, we forget a lot of the basic stuff once you're out there on the street for a little bit, right? So it's important, I think, for us to always kind of go back once in a while, refresh our memory a little bit about what it is that we should be expecting to see and what it is we should be expected to be doing for our patients, right? So I want to get into this, guys. Again, this is a short episode, but I'm just talking about assessment and management, basic stuff here, guys. You look at me probably looking at this stuff going, what are you even talking about, Jim, right? Well, of course, you know, we have to always think about, and this is important, guys, on, on all patients, but I think it's very important we talk about the cardiovascular emergency as well, right? The patient's level of consciousness, you know, if they're confused and stuff like that, it could be an issue of perfusion, and it's important to note that type of stuff, okay? Uh, your ABCs or your CBAs, right? Your airway, your breathing, your circulation, okay? That all kind of ties into the cardiovascular event that might be happening, okay? Especially if the cardiovascular event is something like the patient being in arrest, right? So your ABCs are vital there, okay? Taking a sample history, it can really help you, believe it or not, knowing the patient's signs and symptoms, what allergies they have, what medications they're on. Are they on cardiac type medication, blood pressure medications, even if they're they're on diabetic type medications, right? What's their past medical history? Have they had cardiac events in the past? Do they have a fib? Do they have a uh, an ongoing um, first degree block? Or do they are they known to throw irregular heartbeats like PVCs or PACs, right? Um, what was their last intake? A lot of times, people that eat very big meals can tend to go ahead and have a heart attack, right? And what are the events that have led up to the point where they, you know, are calling you uh, to come and assess them? Okay, yeah, guys, this is basic stuff. I get that it's basic, right? But you know, think about the last time you sat there with a patient and said, "Okay, let me do a sample history." You don't have to say that in your head and go S A M P, but you know what? A lot of this stuff we get, we kind of get through it when we're assessing our patients, and it doesn't matter to me, and I think even to you how you get that done. But it's important to go ahead and assess each one of these markers. Okay, it's going to help you when you're o- for your overall, you know, uh, ongoing sort of rule out diagnosis for the patient. Okay. And for cardiac patients, guys, don't forget the, the OP QRST, right? Important stuff, guys. You're trying to, you know, evaluate a patient's pain, right? What was the onset, right? What's, what's, uh, is anything, you know, the provocation, right? The PU, is anything making that worse? Okay. Anything making it better? Okay. What's the quality? Of, of the pain, okay, can they, can they, you know, is, is it a pressure, is it a, a sharp pain, is it a stabbing pain, is it a combination of a few of them, you'll find out if you haven't done it, that patients will kind of give you 
sometimes two different descriptions. It's it's a pressure and it's uh, and it's sharp. Oh, it's uh, it's dull, but it's it's you know uh, uh, crampy. You know, you never know what they're gonna say. So find out. Okay, that that quality. Okay. Um, is it radiating any place? Right? Is it just in the chest? Is it in the shoulder? Is it in the stomach? Does it go to the back? Does it go down their arm? Is it in their jaw? Maybe it's not even in the chest. Maybe it's just in their shoulder. Okay. Maybe it's in there, just up in their jaw, and they're going into their shoulder. Okay. Um, and again, find out where is it going to. It's just stay in one place. Okay. And what's their severity? Okay. This is something we hear all the time. It's rating in a scale of one to ten. Ten being the worst. Right. Um, find that out, okay? Uh, to me, if I'm treating a patient complaining of chest pain, if I believe it's cardiac related in nature, it doesn't really matter to me what their pain scale is. If they're not really looking like they're in pain, I ask it because I know it's something that's one that's going to be documented, something they're going to ask me at the hospital. But I'm still going to be treating that patient for the pain, whether or not they tell me it's a ten or it's it's a, it's a three. Right? They're still going to get the nitroglycerin. They're still going to get the aspirin. It doesn't matter to me. Right? It might help me judge whether I'm going to start getting uh, uh, more advanced pain med management like fentanyl or something like that. But cardiovascular wise and treating a chest pain, me personally, I'm gonna. It's not gonna matter that much to me. But I'm gonna want to know what that severity is, right? And time, right? How long has it been going on for? Did it just start ten minutes before they called you? Has it been going on for days? Has it been coming and going for days? All stuff, guys. That's important to kind of drill down. It's going to help you decide and help you lead you on the way whether or not it's cardio cardiac related or maybe it's something else, okay? Now, some stuff, guys, when we talk about uh, our assessment too, right? Again, I just talked about detailed exam, right? You're not just taking that history, but you've also got to go ahead and put your hands on the patient. As look at the patient. Do they have JVD, right? Um when you palpate their chest, is the pain increasing? Is it getting worse? Does it change, right? Do you feel anything weird when you're palpating their chest? And their epigastrum, check that as well, okay? Um, you never know if there's something going on um, with abdominal Y that's causing a chest pain, okay? What about their vital signs? Guys, this is common, common stuff, right? But a lot of people don't do the whole gamut, right? It's not just about taking a blood pressure, and a heart rate, right? Look at their color. Look at the condition of the patient's skin, the overall appearance, right? What's their pulse oximetry, okay? Uh, what's their skin temp? Are they clammy? Are they warm, right? All this stuff goes into it, guys, okay? You know, to me, cardiovascular emergencies are common in EMS, and it's very easy to overlook things. Um, and we have a lot of tools available to us. But if you start overlooking simple things, trust me, you will overlook the bigger things, okay? Your EKG, what is it reading, okay? Remember, it's, it's showing electrical impulses, right? It's not proof that the heart's actually beating. That whole thing, treat the patient, not the monitor. While there's, you know, the whole, oh, there's such an EMS you know, dogma. But you know what? There's truth in that that you want to make sure that what you're looking at on the monitor matches the patient's pulse rate, right? You know, if the monitor's showing a systole, you're not going to do CPR if the patient's talking to you, right? So just keep that in mind. Use the EKG as a tool to help you figure out what's going on. You know, you know sometimes your patient might be sitting there uh, short of breath and diaphoretic, and then you're not really sure what's going on. You put them on a monitor, and they're in SVT, right? Or maybe they're bradycardic, right? So use it as a tool along with your other examination and assessment and history taking to lead you along what might be going on with your patient. And guys, think, okay, maybe your patient's not having a heart attack, but maybe it's a an, an aneurysm, right? A triple A. Maybe it's a pulmonary embolism, okay, where they're having chest pain from that, okay? Um, so think about other things that might be going on that could be causing chest pain, okay? It doesn't always have to be NMI. It doesn't always have to be some sort of dysrhythmia that's causing the pain, okay? Now, management, guys, 
again, I'm not going to get too much into it because everyone's protocol is different, but you've got to think about things when you're considering managing your patient. Yes, your ABCs, but think about whether your patient is stable or unstable. What is their blood pressure? How are they appearing? Do they have an altered level uh, or altered uh, level of consciousness, right? Um, what is their skin? Are they cool, clammy, diaphoretic? Are they warm and dry? Are they, you know, uh, are they maintaining, like I said, are they maintaining okay? What does the EKG show you? Is it a systole in your patient's unresponsive or V-fib or V-tac in your patient's unresponsive? Or is your patient responsive complaining of, of palpitations and it's V-tac with a pulse or maybe tachycardia or maybe SVT, right? Two ventricular tachycardia, okay? Maybe the patient's bradycardic, right? What are they showing you? Uh, overall on the EKG along with their presentation. Is there a second degree block, a third degree block? Okay. Um, are they just so bradycardic? Are they, you know, maybe in the 30s, okay, without a block, okay, and their symptoms are coming from that, okay? Look for other dysrhythmias. Are they throwing PVCs, PACs? Is it a junctional type rhythm? Is it um, winky, uh, 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 you know, WPW? Is it, uh, you know, uh, 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 they throw in runs of attack, right? They've got a, um, you know, two to one. They got bigeminy or trigeminy, something like that. Okay, all this stuff is gonna lead you along with the stuff we've just talked about with your assessment and your history taking, right? Is gonna lead you to how you're gonna manage this patient, whether it's um, drugs, aggressive treatment for patients that are in arrest. Okay. Uh, with CPR and intubations and airway management and uh, shocking and defibrillation, right? Maybe it's cardioversion, right? Maybe it's pacing, okay? Your gamut can be pretty wide when it comes to management of the cardiovascular emergency. And like I said, trying to get into each individual uh, one in a short uh, Monday minutes is next to impossible, right? Um, I might go back after... All the Monday minutes are over and kind of focus on each individual um, emergency here. But even then, I don't think I would be able to hit every emergency. Okay. So just know uh, where you're treating the patient, what the path is. Okay. Know the what your guidelines are. Okay. And again, this is the key elements, right? Uh, for exams, not just for what you're actually treating, the key elements for your exam. So what is the basic treatment for a bradycardic symptomatic patient? Or what's the, the treatment for a bradycardic patient that's that's stable and not really symptomatic, okay? This is going to help you pass in your exam. So if you're confused, you're not really quite sure what to do for these patients, right? The VTAC with a pulse versus VTAC without a pulse, right? What are your steps there, guys? Where are you falling in to knowing which is which and what you're going to do, right? Because that's going to help you when it comes to test time, right? Because you might get get questions that ask you what to do for a patient with VTAC and they have a pulse, right? What type of, are you cardioverting that patient, right? Or are you going to do medications first? Is it depend upon if VTAC with a pulse and they're stable versus unstable, right? So if you're not sure, open your textbook, guys. Crack it open. Figure out what, what each of these types of things you would do for a patient so that come to exam time, you have an idea of what you're actually going to do, okay? Because, again, each one of these really, to me, is a way to be, going back to the very, very beginning of the video, each one of these sections, stable ver knowing stable versus unstable, knowing VTAC, knowing types of bradycardia, knowing the type of dysrhythmias, right? This goes back to not just knowing key elements to pass an exam, but it's also understanding and building your knowledge base on each one of these segments here, guys. All right, this stuff is vital. You don't want to sit there scratching your head when you've got an actual live patient in front of you who's got SVT or who's got a symptomatic bradycardia who's unstable and you've got to do something, right? Passing the test is not going to help you with that patient treatment. Knowing what to do, building a knowledge base, and understanding all these different types of presentations will help you. Okay, so if you're not sure, 
Again, crack open that textbook, man. All right, understand this stuff, okay? Um, because it's going to make a difference, okay? And you'll be more confident and you'll be more comfortable, not just when you're taking your test, but also when you're encountering patients with these different types of issues. And again, I can't cover everything. I can't even list half everything here just in this one slide here, trying to tell you all the different types of, of uh, cardiovascular emergencies and events that might be there, right? This is just a kind of an overall view, okay? Sort of let that 10,000-foot uh, view for you to kind of get your mindset going, get you pointed in the right direction. All right, guys, I hope this makes sense. Um, I'm going to actually be doing uh, one more of these videos to wrap up cardiovascular emergencies. I'm going to get into some of the other causes of chest pain, okay? Um, and talking about, you know, uh, MIs and aneurysms, stuff like that. I'm going to kind of go into that next time uh, on the Monday Minutes. Um, guys, I hope you will engage with me on social media. You can get me on Facebook. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash the EMS professional. Or get me on Instagram or Twitter. I'm more active on Instagram. It's at EMS Safe is the, uh, the username for both of those. Check me out on either one of those. Love to engage with you guys. Love to have you guys follow me and, and commenting and liking and all that good stuff. It's, it, it just really, you know, uh, motivates me uh, to keep doing stuff. And I, I do different things on each of, each of these channels. Um, and, guys, if you feel like you're struggling, you need some more help, you want to get drilled down more into stuff, um, go check out emsseo.com. Okay, um, there are practice exams there, all right, but there's also a lots of stuff there, guys, to help you increase your knowledge base. There's some presentations there, there's free downloads, there's study guides, there's video, there's audio, there's actually a, a video there you can get for free on cardiovascular uh, emergencies, okay? Um, just go to the site, go to the free section, and you will see uh, a post there. Um, that Michael Smith did with me on the cardiovascular, uh, cardiac emergency patients, okay? And not necessarily, like I said, for a systole and treating cardiac arrest patients, but other things you need to do when you're assessing your patient. A very, I th What I think is a very powerful uh, 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 presentation there. I'll go ahead and put a link directly to that in the notes here. If you're looking at YouTube, you can get it there, or I'll put it in the show notes at the blog at EMS Office Hours as well. So you can go right to that if you're interested and uh, go ahead and check out that presentation. Again, it's free. You just got to sign up for it. No big deal. Um, that's it, guys. Um, again, if you have comments, concerns, questions, you want to see something here on the Monday Minutes, I'll take a break from the quick study tips and put something in that you want to see here. On the Monday Minutes, um, go ahead and contact me. My email is contact at emsofficehours.com. Or you can go to the blog at emsofficehours, leave me a comment there. Or again, go to any of the social media platforms and you can direct message me there as well. And I will get back to you and we can discuss something that maybe you want to see on the Monday Minutes. Or some maybe you want some clarification, I can point you in the right direction on stuff that you've seen here on the Monday Minutes. All right, guys, that is it. I hope you have a great week. Uh, again, thanks for watching. As always, I'm Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Stay safe. <laughs>